Our next speaker is Chief Kim Bowden. Now, Kim is a well-known indigenous political uh, advocate who has served in both political and administrative capacities with numerous indigenous people's organizations in Saskatchewan. He, he's also a recipient of the Queen's Jubilee Medal in recognition of his work for indigenous peoples. Interestingly enough, both of his families are from both sides, the Red River and the Sea, and the Treaty 6 in Alberta, and particularly the Shelter Station. Now, as, as president of the Coalition of Aboriginal Peoples of Saskatchewan for the past seven years, Kim has raised the profile of a wide range of issues that impact the lives of Métis, status and non-status um, living off the, the reserves. He was elected, he was re -elected uh, as National Vice Chief of the Congress of Aboriginal Peoples this October, this past October. So we're very honored that he is Great to join us today to share his insights and how they relate to the province's proposed new prison in Kempville. Vice Chief Bowden. Well, thank you. I, um, wow, I mean, some of the discussion so far has been very, very insightful. And uh, I'd have to agree 100% in terms of our last, our prior two speakers of what they've said. Now, the Congress of Aboriginal Peoples has been around since 1971, and um, I myself, I got involved way back in 94, and my issue in terms of the uh, biggest thing to me is, is regards to justice and how it impacts Indigenous people across this country. I did come from Saskatchewan. The province of Saskatchewan is probably one of the worst provinces in terms of um, how they treat Indigenous people within the jail system itself and as well as the prison system itself. So you have the two components and they tend to touch each other quite a bit. The, um, the issue here, you know, it's funny when I, when, when, um, I was asked to talk a bit about this, um, my understanding is they wanna take uh, 160 acres or so of, of prime agricultural land and build a prison on it or a jail, provincial jail. And um, way back in 19, so it had been 1958, the band that I came from, the reserve was just located just outside of um, St. Albert, Alberta. And the people there pushed the federal government really hard to push my relatives off that land, including my, my uh, mother and, and of course my grandparents at the time. The reason they pushed them off is they said they wanted the land for agriculture. Well, that land today, is not agriculture, it's a gravel pit, it's an airport, and a number of other resources such as oil and that is being ex extracted from there. So what I'm saying is they would say one thing and of course do another. It was 40 square miles of land that was taken away at that point. Now, in terms of our perspective is, um, Cap, we've been advocating uh, since like I was saying, 1971, we've addressed a, a number of issues with respect to how the justice system impacts our people, whether it's provincially or federally. And what really disturbs me is that there, there is a trend, there's no question about it, in terms of uh, each province, they, they tend to think that building another prison or another jail is something that is needed. And, uh, that, and, they, and, they, and what, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the people, the public that I always talk to as well, they don't understand the implications when it comes to taxes and that and how it impacts there at the bottom line. Now, for example, you take a look at, uh, I'm sure you guys heard about what's happening in Saskatoon where they want to expand the remand center there uh, to $500,000 per cell and hire a bunch of new guards and, and other people and men's staff. And of course they got to build a facility and yet they claim that they, uh, they're trying to address the issue of remand in Saskatoon. Well, that's not true. And you probably heard that this COVID, this um, pandemic has hit that facility quite significantly and the amount of people that have already got that virus. So when, when, I, when I hear about Ontario, I guess on one hand, it's not really nothing new to me. On the other hand, it's very, it, it, it really bothers me that they would want to keep expanding and Aaron uh, really hit a, a number of points in terms of um, uh, 
what what the implications are. Everything that has been said so far has is is, is in line with, in terms of what we're thinking. The other issue too that's really important is the fact that um, the the services and the programs that that go towards Indigenous people, like for example, elders or spiritual care, uh, access to your family, which is really key. What I've noticed in the last probably 10, 15 years or so is that the uh, the facility themselves provincially have actually morphed into a harder edge. In other words, they're almost like the uh, they're almost like the federal pen, penitentiary are today. Like that's how hard they are. So in other words, there's no real sense that there's any kind of support that you would get in any provincial facility. And privatization of food is one example. Uh, uh, lack of any kind of programming is another one in terms of the province. So it doesn't seem to matter whether you apply it anywhere across the country. The provinces, they all do the same thing. And it's like they're dealing from the same playbook. So I would, I'm totally against any, in, any expansion of any jail or a new jail for sure anywhere in this country. It's just unbelievable. We should be cleaning out our facilities and we should be closing them down. We should not be expanding. And when you bulldoze agricultural land and put a cement building on it, we're, how are we going to feed the people when the population gets higher in this in this uh, country, and in, in particular Ontario? I, I just don't understand it, the thinking. But and one one thing I find it doesn't seem to me matter whether it's the Liberals are in power or the Conservatives are in power. It it doesn't seem to matter. It seems to be that they have the same way of thinking. And um, in closing, I just want to say too, somebody mentioned the issue of Healing Lodge. I mean, again, <laughs> if somebody said they wanted to build a Healing Lodge there and and uh, put that forward, well, I, I, I would agree with something like that. Um, at least it's better than what they got now. So in closing, I really, really want to thank you guys for the opportunity to be here. I um, The information so far has been quite interesting. And, and one thing I want to put forward too as well is that we, we like to work with other organizations in terms of a partnership or sharing of knowledge. And uh, that would be certainly get a hold of me I'm, I'm open to that as well so but yeah you got me thinking too one thing i thought was important is i'm heading back to saskatoon here in a couple of weeks i want to address that provincial facility that they're expanding the remand center i think they should not waste their time they should not waste their money i believe too as somebody said this pandemic destroyed these provincial and federal budgets and yet they still want to expand prisons and jails in this country so anyways thank you very much and uh, miigwech